I'll sing it when I have more verses, but I think that one verse is enough. <laughs> I think that one verse is, uh, is enough. So sh- sh- Shalom Saints, it's, it's nice. It's a privilege to stand before all of you here and present the word of Yahweh. You know, we who, who teach will be held to a, a higher standard. So, you know, I respect all kinds of criticism because I want to be right when Messiah sees me. But so, um, last time... I stood before you. We talked about being in spirit and what it looks like to be in spirit. But, you know, I was thinking that something came to, uh, to me and says, well, you know, um, it, it's nice to talk about being in spirit because we talk a lot about that in this assembly, which is a good thing. You know, being in spirit, we talk about being led of the spirit and being filled with the spirit. But I think, you know, some of the saints may not know how, how to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I was feeling that, and then I, I was talking to, to my lovely wife, Morgan, and she, she after uh, about uh, last time's sermon, and she said, you need to talk about how to be filled with the Spirit. So I think that was confirmation. So today, we're going to talk about how to be filled with the Spirit. Now, for the mature saints, this might be quite boring and basic, because maybe you done did that already. You know, I'm trying to get my, my southern slang, because I'm from South Dakota. I'm from the south. That was a joke that didn't go over well. That's okay. We're going to continue. All right. So, of course, you didn't know where South Dakota is. So, you know, Americans in geography, yeah, they don't mix. Okay. I'm American now, so, you know. Let's just move on. This is not working. Okay. All right. So, we took a lot about being filled with the Holy Spirit. But how, how... are you, how do you get to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Because we're going to know that when we're born again, you know, and we'll, we'll talk about the, the basic uh, things here, which I basic by, I, I think most of us as believers should know. So we'll talk about, you know, being born again, having the Holy Spirit and being filled with the Holy Spirit as they're, they're different. But we're going to talk about how to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So we'll start with the very basic. Who is the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to tell you, saints, um, most churches, I, I, I don't think they really talk about who the Holy Spirit is. I think, I think of all, of, of between the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, I think the Holy Spirit is the least known person, you know, which is very, very sad because the Holy Spirit is who is here on earth with us right now. So who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is Yahweh. The Holy Spirit is Yahweh. Yahweh, the Holy Spirit, is, is the visible power of Elohim you see in the world. When someone is raised from the dead, when miracles are performed, when someone is born again, all that happens because of the power of Yahweh, because of the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that is performing that power. So, 
For example, verses like um, Acts 1 and verse 8, it says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So when you receive the Holy Spirit, you have power to do the work. And then he's talking of, of, of Mary or Miriam, the mother of Yeshua. Luke 1 verse 35. And the angel answered her, that is Miriam, Mary. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and what? The power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of Elohim. So that power of a virgin having a child, that's from the Holy Spirit because that is impossible for um, a woman to have a child without a man. So, let's talk about being born again. We, we are all born sinners. We are conceived in sin. So we are all born sinners. When we repent of our sins and believe the gospel of Yeshua, the Messiah, and receive the Holy Spirit, then we are born again. Now, there were some people in the scriptures who repented of their sins and believed the gospel but hadn't yet received the Holy Spirit. They were prayed for, and then they received the Holy Spirit. Every child of Yahweh has the Holy Spirit. Romans 8 verse 16 says, The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of who? Of Elohim. Every child of Yahweh has the Holy Spirit. And then Galatians 4 verse 6 tells us, And because you are sons, Elohim has sent the Spirit of his Son, Yeshua, into our hearts, crying what? Abba, Abba Father. So if you can say that Father to Yahweh, then you are his Son, the Holy Spirit enables you to say that. So now, why do we receive the Holy Spirit? Why is it important or necessary for us to receive the Holy Spirit? Children of Yahweh receive the Holy Spirit because they need to be changed. We are born in sin. In sin, you cannot serve Yahweh. You need to be changed. That's why you need to be born again. Now, people sing these songs about born that way. You know, we're born. In yeah, if you're born that way, you need to be born again. To be in Yahweh's kingdom, to serve him, you need to be born again. We are born sinners. Our thoughts are sinful. Our behaviors are sinful. Our intentions are sinful. Everything we do as unbelievers is sinful. And when we receive the Holy Spirit and we yield to the Holy Spirit, we start to change. Our thoughts change. How we talk changes. Our intentions change. Our values change. These changes happen because of the Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18 says, But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image, the image of the Lord, Yeshua, from glory to glory, just as from the Lord, the Spirit, who is the Holy Spirit. So we should be changing into the image of, of Yeshua. And then um, Titus 3, 46 says, But when the goodness and loving kindness of Elohim, our Savior, appeared, he saved us, not because of works by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and what? Renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Yeshua Messiah, our Savior. I just love this verse. There is so much teaching in this verse. Oh, my goodness. It's the whole gospel. It's the whole life of a believer. This is beautiful. The renewal of the Holy Spirit. You need to be renewed. You need to be changed. That's why this, you have to be born again. These changes happen because we need to be changed into the image of Yeshua Messiah. We will start to behave and act like Yeshua Messiah. This change is necessary because it provides proof to you and to others that Yahweh is real. See, the reason why the, the gospel, there, there are many religions in this world, but the reason why the gospel is the truth is because the gospel can take the worst sinners, the criminals, killers, and change them into the most loving person. See, we have no other message on earth that does that. There's no other message on earth that has changed 
people. No other message. Since the gospel is true. So this change is necessary because it provides proof to you and to others that you are indeed a child of Yahweh. Now, if, if you haven't changed since the day you were born again, and you have been born again for at least a year, there are only two things that may be wrong. Okay? Two things that may be wrong if you haven't changed. One, you don't have the Holy Spirit. Therefore, you cannot change. Without the Holy Spirit, you cannot change. Or two, you have the Holy Spirit, but you don't yield to him. You don't obey him. These are the only two reasons why there's no change. The Holy Spirit will change you if you obey. You yield. You, you, you listen to, to the word. You do what the word says. You will change. Or you have the Holy Spirit, which I think is very common in the church, you have the Holy Spirit, but you don't yield to him. You have your own thoughts, or your own will. You do what you want to do. But, but, but both states, these states, okay, both are bad. And if you remain in these states, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. I mean, I, 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 I hate to preach like, well, it's the word of Yahweh, so I'm going to preach it. You know? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preach it, okay? So... It, Both states are not good, so you have to. So if you're in state number one, meaning you you don't have the Holy Spirit, you need to you need to ask for the Holy Spirit. You know? So but we're gonna also go by what why we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We need to be filled with the Holy Spirit because we need to change to look like Yeshua, the Messiah. This is Yahweh's will. This was predestined that we are to be conformed to his image. And then two, there's work in the kingdom that needs done. You know, one of the, the, the difference between the Holy Spirit coming upon people in the, uh, before Yeshua came and, the, and, and now is that Yeshua hasn't yet been raised. There was no person to be conformed to because Yeshua had not yet been raised. But now Yeshua has been raised, so we have an image to be conformed to. This is the image of his son, Yeshua. So we can look, behave, act like Yeshua. We are regenerated. There's a change that happens. Now, Romans 8 verse 29 says, for those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. So there is a Christian lady, a believer, she's looking into a mirror. This is just trying to, you know, so when you look in, in the mirror, what you should be seeing, not literally, but what what <laughs> should be seeing is the image of Yeshua. When people see you, they should be seeing the image. You're becoming more and more like Yeshua, the way you talk, your actions, your thoughts, becoming more and more like Yeshua. That's the image of Yeshua. See, when we behave like Yeshua, it is easier to preach the gospel. More people can come to faith in Yahweh because they see the changes in your life. Many people are more likely to believe that, that Yahweh is real, that, that, that God is real. They see that change in your life. There is, do you know why the word, word of mouth is the best form of advertising? Because you've seen it. Something that I've seen. I've beheld with my own eyes something that has happened to me. I can testify of that. It's not something somebody has seen. It's something that I have seen. This is why the gospel has spread even though people were being killed for it. They were told, you know, you, you, you have to deny the gospel or we'll kill you. I said, I, I can't. What I've seen, I've seen. It's true. So your preaching of the gospel is not just with words. It's with a proven change in your lifestyle, a proven change in your lifestyle. And then there's work to be done in the kingdom. There are souls that need to be saved. This is why we need to be changed. There is work in the world that needs done. And that work is successful only if done in the power of the Holy Spirit. Working as pastors, evangelists, apostles, deacons, missionaries, Teachers and all other offices in the kingdom of Yahweh, they need done. This is work that needs to be done. 
1 Corinthians 12 verse 28 tells us, And Elohim has done what? Appointed where? In the church. First, apostles. Then, second, prophets. Third, teachers. Then, miracles. Then, gifts of healing. Helping, administrating, and various kinds of tongues. There is work that needs to be done. That work can only be done in the power of the Holy Spirit. Because if it's not done in the power of the Holy Spirit, it's being done in the flesh. And those who do works in the flesh, they can't please Yahweh. That work will be burnt up as worthless. Those who do their work well will be rewarded by Messiah Yeshua with an eternal crown and a whole lot more. There's a whole lot more that we don't know about the next life when he comes in glory. But first, we need to know one thing. Okay, we need to know, what, yeah, those who are in the flesh, they cannot please Yahweh. So that's why we must be in the Spirit. So we'll talk about how to be filled with the Holy Spirit soon, you yeah, are willing. One thing we need to know, though, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you're going to hell. If, if, we don't, if, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you're going to hell. And... Why is that? Because the scripture says, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you're none of his. Right. Romans 8, 9 tells us, you, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If, in fact, the spirit of Elohim dwells in you, anyone who does not have the spirit of Messiah does not belong to him. So having the Holy Spirit is important. It's critical. I know these messages for the, for, for the, uh, are basic, but this is what we still need to, to know, you know. So what, what do we need to do to get the Holy Spirit? Repent and believe the gospel of Yeshua Messiah. You've got to repent of your sins. You are a sinner. Your lifestyle is contrary to what Yahweh desires for you. You have sin, which came from our parents, Adam and Eve. You have committed sins too. And then second, ask to receive the Holy Spirit. Because Yahweh is holy, sinful people cannot be in his presence. All sinful people are cast away from Yahweh into hell, where there is continuous suffering and torment and gnashing of teeth. It's the worst place you can ever go. This is, I mean... It doesn't matter how you've lived your life. If you end up here, you've lost. This is the worst place you can ever go. But because Yahweh's love for us, he made a way for us to be reconciled to him through his son. The suffering you're supposed to receive in hell, Yahweh placed on his son, Yeshua. His son died as a substitute for anyone who wants his or her sins taken away. Instead of you dying and being cast into hell for eternity, Yeshua died in your place. Yahweh placed your sin on Yeshua and punished him like a sinner receiving the eternal condemnation on the cross as you would receive in hell. Yeshua was buried. He, he, he died, he was buried, and he rose again. Proof that all who believe in him, though they die, they shall live again forever like him. And they shall never experience the fires of hell. Blessed are those who are part of the first resurrection, for the second death has no power over them. Elohim can forgive you of your sins only if you repent of your sins and believe in the gospel of Yeshua, Messiah. That's the only way. There, there are no multiple ways or different. That's the only way. There's one way given. Some people say, well, how can there only be one way? Huh. I'm glad that there is a way. At least there's a way. You know? Some say, well, uh, how, how, how can there only be one way? How is that fair? I'm glad that there is a way. There is a way. And if they tell me, oh, you know what? The only way to get out of, to get out of this jail is that door. I say, well, how come there are not no, two doors or, or three doors? There's a door. Go through the door. There's a door. This is the gospel of Yeshua Messiah. He is the door. There's a door. 
go through the door. This is the good news that your sins can be forgiven. Your sins can be forgiven. Your condemnation wiped away. But you must repent. See, repentance, you know, in the Greek, it's, it's, it's changing your mind. In, in Hebrew, it's a literal, you know, turning around. When we put them together, you change your mind and you turn around. Repentance means stop doing the wrong things you're doing. It's not just changing your mind, but actually changing your actions. So if anyone hasn't yet repented and believed in the gospel of Yeshua, please see me after this message and we can talk or see one of the elders. This is important. This is, if, if, if you lose at anything in life, win at this. For it doesn't matter what you do. We can only boast in one thing. Oh, I know Yahweh and that Yahweh knows me. That we can boast in. Everything else, there's nothing to boast in. But I can boast Oh, that I know Yahweh through the Holy Spirit. It's a humble boasting. He's saying that I know the one, the only one you need to know. Right? He satisfies me. You're the only thing that matters. The only thing. When you repent and believe the gospel, you're on your way to salvation. Yahweh will then place his Holy Spirit within you. The Holy Spirit is a sign, a seal, a stamp that you belong to Yahweh. He's also a guide to grow as a believer in Yeshua. Now, of course, I mean, the Holy Spirit if you, is many, many things. But for the sake of this message, we'll focus on these two things. He's a sign, a seal, a stamp. You belong to Yahweh. He's also a guide to grow as a believer in Yeshua. But if for some reason, for us to be aligned with the word, if for some reason you haven't yet received the Holy Spirit, you need to follow what Yeshua said. You need to ask. Ask for the Holy Spirit. Luke eleven thirteen 13 says, If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? So if you don't have the Holy Spirit, but it's, it also goes if you're not filled, ask. Ask Him. Ask Yahweh. Yahweh is more than willing to give you his Holy Spirit. It's his desire. Ask him. You need to pray and keep on praying and keep on praying and keep on praying until you receive the Holy Spirit. So how do you know when you receive the Holy Spirit? Well, the most immediate sign is prophecy. You will speak of the goodness of Yahweh and declare his words. You will praise Yahweh and bless his name. You will prophesy. For example, when King Saul received the Holy Spirit, he prophesied. This is from 1 Samuel 10, 9-10. When he saw turned his back to leave Samuel, Elohim gave him another heart. And all these signs came to pass that day. When they came to Gibeah, Behold, a group of prophets met him, and the spirit of Elohim rushed upon him, and he prophesied among them. And when all who knew him previously saw how he prophesied with the prophets, the people said to one another, What has come over the son of Kish? Is so also among the prophets? And then Numbers eleven twenty nine, But Moses said to him, that is Joshua, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all Yahweh's people were prophets? That Yahweh would put his spirit on them. So we see both in the Old Testament books and in the New Testament books, when the spirit came upon people, they, they prophesied. Now what about speaking in tongues? Well, what is speaking in tongues when we break it down? It's prophesying in a different language. On Pentecost, when the saints spoke in tongues, what did Peter say? But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be. Elohim declares that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall what? Prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. Peter was quoting Joel 2.28. And Yahweh says when the spirit comes upon people. 
They will prophesy. Speak of the goodness of Yahweh. The richness of Yahweh. Yahweh said they will prophesy. So don't get stuck on speaking in tongues. That's prophecy in a different language. But only look at prophecy. That's what the word says. So if you prophesy in English, our common language, that's good. If you prophesy in a different language, that's good. But pray that there's an interpretation so that those who hear you may be edified. But those who have the Holy Spirit, prophesy. Also pray that you may prophesy. If you read the, the Psalms, you hear of David taking off the, the goodness of Yahweh, the, the richness of, of loving to be in his presence. Oh, how majestic are your ways, oh Yahweh. Oh, how good it is to be in the presence of Yahweh. You know, it, it, one day in your presence is better than a thousand elsewhere. This is prophesying. These things come from the Holy Spirit. So if you're not sure if you have prophesied before, then pray. Pray that you may prophesy. We need to hear more of the goodness, the richness of who Yahweh is. More prophecies in the scriptures. Talk, I mean in the uh, assembly, talk of the goodness, the richness of Yahweh. Encourage us. Now after you have received the Holy Spirit and you continue in the word, within a, a year, I would say, we, we should start to display display the fruit of the Spirit. So there should be some, some change that is happening. Now, after you have received the Holy Spirit, you have had the indwelling, how do you get filled with the Holy Spirit? Like I said before, we must know that having the Holy Spirit, being filled with the Holy Spirit are two different things. It's not the same thing. Everyone who believes in Yeshua, repents, believes the gospel, will receive the Holy Spirit. If you haven't asked for the Holy Spirit, if you doubt you have received him, ask. To be filled with the Holy Spirit is to be completely led and directed by him. Your thoughts and actions and your words all come from the Holy Spirit. This is where all believers should be. So let's read that to, um, together, sense. To be filled with the Holy Spirit is to be completely led and directed by him. Your thoughts and actions and words all come from the Holy Spirit. This is where all believers should be. This is where Yahweh desires us to be. So terms like being in the Spirit or being filled with the Spirit or being led by the Spirit, these are all, all the same things. So how can we be filled with the Spirit every day? Ask. Ask. We're told to pray without ceasing. Ask. Yeshua said, if you ask anything in my name, according to the will of the Father, I would do it. This is in accordance to the will of the Father. If I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, I will keep praying until there is plenty of evidence Plenty of evidence that I am filled with the Holy Spirit. I will keep on praying. We're told you pray without ceasing. You pray and you pray and you pray and you pray until there is plenty of evidence that I am filled with the Holy Spirit. One of the best answers you can ever hear from Yahweh is, I've already done that. One of the best answers. If you're praying for something and Yahweh says, it's already been done, that's a great answer. But you need to ask and ask and ask until you are filled with the Holy Spirit. You don't just pray one time. What kind of faith is that? Faith keeps on praying and praying and praying and praying until you are filled with the Holy Spirit. You got to keep on praying. This is important. This is about your soul. So I will keep on praying until there is plenty of evidence that I am filled with the Holy Spirit. I can see it. Others can see it. Wherever I go, they can see it. Plenty of evidence. That's how you get filled with the Holy Spirit. So I will pray on Shabbat today. I will pray tomorrow on the first day. And on Monday and on Tuesday, I will keep on praying until there is plenty of evidence that I am filled. And I will pray that I be filled every single day. 
being filled with the Holy Spirit, being baptized, being led are the same things. Now, being filled with the Holy Spirit doesn't mean you're prophesying all the time or you're jumping for, for joy all the time or being, being overly active all the time. Yeshua was filled with the Holy Spirit. He, he was the Holy Spirit. But as a man, he was filled with the Holy Spirit. Yet sometimes he was quiet. Sometimes he went off to pray by himself. Sometimes he was talking normally. Sometimes he was preaching on the mountainside. And sometimes he was turning tables. And sometimes, well, one time from what we see, he was sleeping in the boat with the disciples. But he was still filled, still led by the Holy Spirit. So it's not always being active. It's if your thoughts and your, your, your actions are according to the word and you deny yourself, you say, I, I know I feel this way. I want to do this, but I want to do this instead. You're being led by the Holy Spirit. For those who live according to the word, live according to the Holy Spirit. For the word and the Holy Spirit are the same. The word is Yeshua. The Holy Spirit is Yeshua in us. When Pilate asked Yeshua questions and he was quiet, he was still filled and led by the Holy Spirit. You are filled with your, the Holy Spirit when your words, your actions, your thoughts all align with the word of Yahweh. It doesn't mean you don't get tempted. All believers get, got, get tempted. Yeshua got tempted. But what did he use? The word. He leaned on the word. He went back to the word. And even when his, his own flesh didn't want to experience the, the, the separation from the Father and the, the suffering on the cross, his will was going the other way. But what did he do? He leaned on the word. For it was already written that Messiah must suffer. So when you, you lean on the word... So if you, to be filled with the Holy Spirit, ask. Keep on asking and asking and asking until you are filled. And then also the second one is continuous obedience to the word. This is important because sometimes we obey the word today, tomorrow, it's all about me. Then the next day, oh, you know, I, was, I, was, I, I heard Caleb, so I'm, I'm kind of in the, the mood, so I'll obey Yahweh, but the next day I wake up, oh, my back hurts, you know, I missed the, uh, the alarm clock, so I'm heading to work late, oh, now I'm in all in my flesh. No, it shouldn't be like that. Every day, continuous obedience to the word, continuous. If we ask to be filled with the Holy Spirit and we continuously obey the word, we shall definitely be filled with the Holy Spirit. You can't go wrong with these saints. You can't go wrong. Ask Yahweh to be filled. Continuously obey the word. Continuously. There are some things in the word that will go against your nature. What you, your, what, what you, you desire. But when you say it's not about me but about Yahweh. Yeshua continuously obeyed. You know, if Yahweh does things out of his, his desire. You know, he, he says that, that you know... Um, Yahweh hates the workers of iniquity. You know, that's his, his feeling. But yet it says, while we were yet sinners, while we were yet workers of iniquity, Messiah died for us. See, his will, if, if Yahweh went by what he felt, nobody would be here. But Yahweh go by his, his word, his will. If Yeshua went by what he felt, he would have never gone through to the cross. Yahweh is not asking you to do anything he hasn't yet done before. Yeshua laid down his will for your sake. So then why can't you lay down your will for his sake? To me, that's a fair exchange. But if you look at it, it's more than fair. You are getting eternal life. You are getting more. You are getting, ah, oh, it's, it's more than fair. The, 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 the laying down of your will is, is nothing compared to what you will receive in Yahweh. And the reason why some of you, saints, aren't filled with the Holy Spirit daily is because you don't obey Yahweh daily. 
You obey Yahweh in some things, but not in everything. In some things, yeah, but in some things, you're the king or the queen. You do the things in the Bible that you like, not everything that's written in it. The, the word that you know, you are supposed to obey it as much as you know it. But if you're, you only do the things that you like or the things that make sense to you, you're, you're half-hearted. You know, you, you're what is known as a, a half-hearted believer or lukewarm or casual Christian. You're not hot. You're not sold out. You're not all in. And because you're not all in, Yahweh knows you're not that serious about your faith. You're not. Because you're not all in, you can't be filled with the Holy Spirit. Yahweh knows you're not that serious about your faith. Think about it. If, if you were in a relationship with someone, but they only called you a few times, sometimes they picked up the phone, sometimes they, they didn't, never called you back, you really never met any of their friends, maybe one or two. Maybe you met their, their family, you don't really know them, maybe a cousin here or there. Do, do you really think that person is serious about a relationship with you? They're not. So it is the same when you're half-hearted with Yahweh. You are not serious about your relationship with him. But with Yahweh, it's not just a relationship. It's a marriage. We are betrothed to him, looking forward to the wedding. But some of you saints, some saints, you're not serious about your betrothal or your engagement. Betrothal. That's why you don't talk to him every day. You don't pray every day or multiple times a day. You don't let him in all your life. Maybe some of your life. But he's not ruling all your life. Just some of it. That's why when you pray to him, sometimes he feels cold or distant. Of course he's cold and distant. You haven't opened up your whole life to him. You are not obeying everything you know in the scriptures. You know, one thing about today's church is a lack of of diligence. Diligence is, is steady, earnest, honest, energetic effort. Honest effort. If you don't make an effort to call or text your fiance, you're in a, you're, you're we're betrothed to be married. You don't call or text maybe a few times, maybe once a week. You know, you don't spend time together. You don't talk about your feelings. That relationship is dying. If you continue in that way, that relationship will soon be dead. If you've been born again for more than two years and you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, you're not led by the Holy Spirit, you don't hear Yahweh's voice, you lack one thing, diligence. You're not actively pursuing Yahweh. You're not diligently pursuing. I said somebody who's born again, so you have the Holy Spirit. But you're not actively, diligently pursuing him. You have to be diligent about it, just as if you're in an engagement, a betrothal. You have to call your fiancé. You have to spend time with him or her. You're not reading your Bible, or not just to read it, but, but to find out what is Yahweh saying and how does this apply to my life? Who is Yahweh? What does he want with me? Or reading the letters of, of Paul. When I was a young believer when I was just, you know, born again, I used to go through the New Testament scriptures, find out the fruits of the Holy Spirit and how we're supposed to behave and what you can't say, on, you know, and, and that was really, really, that really helped me uh, to, to grow because the, the New Testament books, especially the letters of Paul, they're pretty, they're quite easy to understand and from, in terms of like, before you go into the, the, the deep stuff, you know, you, you can read and say you know, how, how believers ought to behave, how you ought to talk, things you're not supposed to be doing, you know. So I read those books first. I didn't want to go into Ezekiel and try to explain what all those things mean. Whew, that's, that's deep, you know. But so what I'm saying is, are you reading the scriptures to find out how you ought to behave? That's what believers should do. We don't just read the Bible to, to know about stories about 
David and Joseph and what they did. No, what does that mean to me? How do I apply that to my life? That's studying the word to know, to know Yahweh. If you're not doing that, you're, you're half-hearted and lukewarm. If you continue like that, you will not inherit the kingdom of Elohim because Yahweh doesn't do that. You're in a ma- we're, we're in a marriage. We're betrothed to be married. You know? Just like if you're engaged to someone, we are engaged, a betrothal. It's a covenant to Yeshua. I know we think we are the bride of Yeshua, but we are not his bride yet. This hasn't happened yet. We are betrothed to him. It's an engagement built on a covenant. We are not his bride yet. We have made a commitment to follow him and to obey him. We have made a commitment to be faithful to him until he returns. The wedding happens when he comes. And those who remain faithful when he comes, they'll continue on to the wedding and be his bride. The wedding is coming, but only those who are committed to him will make it to the wedding. So, you know, like, like Morgan and I were engaged. We were betrothed, you know. We were in a covenant relationship, committed to one another, looking forward to the wedding. That was, that was such a nice day, you know. That was so, so, I was so nervous. Whew. So this was a, we were in a, we were engaged to be married. I really love that picture. I just, I just love it. Love it. Our relationship. Now, despite us being engaged, if, if Morgan started showing signs of not being serious, she's not picking up my calls, you know, she's not calling me back, not texting back, you know, she starts showing signs of not being committed. Our relationship would have become dry. And then guess what? No wedding. There would have been no wedding. No. Give me back my ring. <laughs> it would have been the same thing if I showed no commitment, you know. That would have been very sad. No wedding. It would have been really sad. Oof. It would have been the same thing if I stopped showing commitment to my lovely bride, Morgan. If I started being half-hearted, you know, not telling her I, I loved her, or just being, you know, nonchalant. I'll call you sometimes. I don't really... I had to actively pursue her, you know. I had to call her. We had to spend time together. And we didn't have to follow Yahweh's way of doing the relationship. If I had showed signs of lack of commitment, should have probably said, you know what, I just don't think you're really serious about this. If we're going to be married, we have to be completely committed. You see, I bought her a beautiful ring, beautiful engagement ring. That's actually her, her hand. Beautiful. It's a gorgeous ring. Even with a little bit of light, it, it sparkles. The ring was a sign that, that Morgan is a betrothed woman. She is, she is taken. She is committed to someone. She's going to be married soon. That engagement ring is like the Holy Spirit. It's a sign that that person is to be married to Yeshua. But you see, it's not the engagement ring that determines whether one will be married or not. It's the commitment. Because even if we had this engagement ring and she's not committed to me, there's no wedding. So it's not having the Holy Spirit that determines whether one will be part of the bride of Yeshua. It's the commitment to Yeshua. That's why we see many people who once walked with Yahweh, but they, they fell away. They stopped being committed. Though they had the Holy Spirit, but they stopped being committed. You see, so we see verses like this. Brother will deliver brother over to death. And the father, his child, talk, talking about the uh, persecution of the church. And children will rise against parents and have them put to death. 
but you will be hated for all by, for my name's sake. But the one who what? Endures to the end will be saved. The one who is committed to the end will be saved. Or you hear things, uh, verses like, like this. So Yeshua said to the Jews who had believed in him, if you abide, continue in my word, then you are truly my disciples. Continue. Not just the day that he's saying this, but tomorrow and the day after that and the day after that. Committed. And you will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. If you continue. Many people use this and they just use verse 32. Verse 32 is based on verse 31. You continue in the word, then you will know the truth. You will know who Yahweh is. Know the power of the Holy Spirit. And you will be free. When Yahweh sets you free, you're free indeed. It's not just free from the penalties of hell, but, but free from all these ailings that come with sin. Free indeed. See, Morgan would have had the engagement ring, but if she became uncommitted, there would be no wedding. Same thing if I had become uncommitted. It's the same thing with Yeshua. To make it to the wedding, you must be completely committed. You must be completely committed. If you're going to be the bride, right, right now we're in a covenant, we're committed to him. But we haven't been changed yet to become his bride. When we, he comes and we're changed, we're dressed in white robes, then we become his bride. Being half-hearted, lukewarm, double-minded, casual Christian means there's no waiting for you. There's no waiting for you. You have to be completely committed. These last few verses, you know, they talked about complete or continuous obedience. It doesn't mean you don't fall. But those who are committed, when they fall, what do they do? They get back up. They repent and they get back up. When, if I'm engaged to be married to, to Morgan and I, I say something bad and she's, she's hurt, what do I do? I apologize. I repent. I'm sorry. And we get back together. But if I say, well, you know what? I'm, I'm sorry. I, I said that, but I don't really, you know, sorry you feel that way. But I'm not, I don't really apologize. You know, that's, you have to apologize. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's the same thing as repentance changing. Now, I could give you examples of people in the scriptures who were committed to Yeshua and were filled with the Holy Spirit. We could talk about David and Joshua and Daniel or Pentecost. And, but sometimes I feel like we've, we've heard a lot of that. And, and which, if we've heard that, we really should be changing. But I thought, what about here? I mean, there are saints here who are, are led by the Holy Spirit. And, I, and we've seen evidence of that. So I'm going to ask some saints to speak about their walk. I know you're starting to get nervous, but I, I, those people have already know who they are. <laughs> they have already been prepared. So I'm going to ask Brother Leonardo, if you, if you could come up here, please. And he's going to tell us what he does. Because with Brother Leonardo, I've seen with the way he talks. And I think I'm not the only one, like at the Feast of Tabernacles, you know, he, he led the congregation into prayer. But what Yahweh was um, telling him, you know, and, and since that day, things really seemed to, to really go well, but Leonardo heard from, from Yahweh, and this is not just the, the first time, that was just one example, but so, Brother Leonardo, how, based on your own experience, and how are you led by the Holy Spirit? So, I'll talk about that exact um, situation. So I know for a fact that the first few days of the feast, it was really hard for me to tap into the worship. I don't know what was like going on, but I couldn't tap into it. And uh, I remember my, I was feeling vexed like the night before we did our, uh, our um, service. And uh, I remember when I fell asleep, I had a dream. And in my dream, I was in front of the congregation and just talking, and I was, you know, pretty much rebuking 
or just, you know, saying some things. But I didn't, when I woke up, I did not remember any of the words that I said in the dream. But I remember telling my wife, I'm like, I woke up, I'm like, babe, I just had a dream. I just told off the whole church. <laughs> and she was like, well, that might be a sign. And, um, but I didn't remember what I said in the, in the dream. So I didn't think that, like, maybe that probably wasn't it. But I remember um, you started singing the song, I Surrender, um, some, I remember the part it had I Surrender in it. And while I was sitting there, like, I just kept hearing, like, go up and say this, like, say this, go up and say this. And I, I didn't want to get up, because I'm like, this is a good part in the song, though. You don't want me to, like, cut off. He's like, go up and say this. And I just, and it just can't, it kept getting louder and louder, like, to the point where it's just like, I can't deny, I just got to go up and, and say it. And... So therefore, I, I just stopped trying to fight against it, and I just got up, went up there, and, and Yahweh just you know, gave me everything he wanted me to say. And so I said it, and I just you know, let the spirit move, and it was like a huge breakout, and um, it led me to pray for my wife and do all the other types of things. You know, the spirit just, once it, it gets going, it, it just moves. So that's what happened. Um, on a daily basis, what do you do? Well, for sure, I'm definitely in my word every day. Um, I stopped, like, like definitely when I went to work. I used to listen to gospel music all the time, but now I replace that with just listening to the word. So I'm in the word every day, and I, I know I pray every night because I pray with Nico um, as he go to bed all, every night. Um, I would say that there are areas where I know I can not improve in my prayer life, like more so in the mornings. But my mornings is just me listening to the words. So I guess it's like, you know, I just interchange them. But either way, I'm in the word or I'm praying um, more often than I were like, you know, years ago. And uh, I know for a fact that I'm, I'm living what I know I should be doing unto Yahweh. And I make sure that at work, I'm holding up a whole, you know, my the image for Yeshua. So everyone at my job knows that I'm a believer. They know not to ask me things. When people come around, they stop cussing because they know, you know, that I hold up a certain standard unto Yahweh. So I can say that I've seen the most growth in me, according to the Holy Spirit, whenever I put off the things that Yahweh brings to my attention. And whenever I don't, I find myself in a stagnant place and not necessarily moving forward. So I know I have seen that for sure in my life. So I know if I want to keep growing, I need to keep yielding. And if I don't yield, then I'm going to find myself in a, a stuck place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we heard some things that are, I think, line up with the word, being in the word every day. Some, you, you may not be reading it, but listening to it as it gets into your subconscious so you can always remember or think about it. Another thing that he, he um, uh, mentioned was um, putting off what Yahweh tells you to put off. You know, stop doing the thing that Yahweh... Because that, leaves, that, that song was saying, make room. Is there room in your heart? Put off those things. Let Yahweh take all the room. In your heart. Thank you so, so much, Brother Leonardo. Next is uh, Evangelist Denise. She's going to tell us, because at the Feast of Tabernacles too, but we've seen this more in her than just at the Feast of Tabernacles, that, you know, um, she's led of the Spirit, that her, her words, actions line up with the words. So what, Sister Denise, you could talk about the Feast of Tabernacles, or, or just what, how are you led with the Holy Spirit? Hallelujah. Um, uh, Pastor Jeremiah wanted me to share what happened at the feast. And I'll tell you, for those of you who have known me my whole walk, which is like most of the older saints, you know that I'm kind of a controlling person and I have a very hard time just kind of surrendering, you know, especially when it comes to the things of the spirit where you don't know what you're actually going to do or how it's going to look, you know, so I'm kind of one of those reserved people. So speaking in tongues is not something that I just normally do. You know what I mean? I don't just normally do that. I know there's people among us who have a prayer language and they speak in tongues frequently, but I'm not that person. So when we were at the feast, I asked Lady Robinson if she would pray with my daughter, Denisha. 
So me and Lady Robinson, we laid hands on her and we began to pray for her in the spirit. And what I mean by praying for somebody in the spirit is the spirit is making intercession for you. You, you don't necessarily always know, you know, what somebody is dealing with, where they're at, the right words to say. You don't always know that. But if you're yielding to the spirit, whichever way he's leading, he's going to touch the bases that need to be touched. So we're praying for her and I'm praying out loud, you know, and I'm asking Yahweh to, you know, show her that he loves her and that he has a purpose and a calling for her life and how she's allowing all of these different things to be distractions and take her off the path. And I'm saying all this stuff to her. And after we get done praying, I'm sitting there and I hear the sister um, from Georgia, Sister Frances, is on the other side of the sanctuary and she's speaking in tongues and she's just kind of flowing in tongues. And I see the elders around her and I'm just observing all of this. And Elder Robinson tells me to come over there. So I go over there, and he wants me to pray for Sister Frances. So when I go to lay hands on her, I just feel the power. The Spirit just, like, hits me like a wave. You know, I can just feel this, this force just kind of over me, like a pressure on me, you know, is the best way I can describe it. It's like a, you know, it's just something just moving me, moving me away from where I'm trying to be, you know. And I just feel, I just feel this building up in me, and it just starts flying out of my mouth. And, I, and I'm not, I kid you not, as Yahweh is my witness, I'm like, I'm speaking, but what I'm saying is not what's coming out of my mouth. I'm like, what is happening right now? That's what I'm saying. I'm literally saying, what is happening right now? But it's not sounding like what is happening right now. It's just these words are just flying out of my mouth. And I'm like, in, the, in that immediate moment, I'm like, what is happening right now? You know what I'm saying? Why is this happening? And then I just fell on my face, and Yahweh gave me a word. And while I was on the ground, he gave me a word, and he brought to mind the very things that I was praying for Denisha. He was like, do you believe what you say to other people? Really? Do you? Do you know I have a purpose for your life and a calling for you? Do you know that you're distracted and you're allowing all of these things to distract you and take you off of the path that I have made for you? Do you understand that you have to give that all over to me and be about my business? And this is what he's saying to me while I'm on the floor, still speaking in tongues. Mind you, my mouth is doing something completely different than what my mind, you know, I'm, I'm hearing this and I'm doing this. It's just crazy to me. Then I get up and then I get a word from Elder Robinson, which mind you, when I'm speaking in tongues, I'm not speaking in English, you know, but Elder Robinson basically confirms what I'm hearing in my head. He tells me what the Spirit's saying and adds a little bit more to it, but it was on the same line, you know. And so this is how the Spirit of Yahweh works. It's always witnessed by two or three. There's always a confirmation. It's not something that you can fake because Yahweh always has witness to what he does. You know what I'm saying? So when he gives you something in the Spirit, he's going to bring the witness. So the witness was Elder Robinson. Then I left the room. And I went into the bathroom because I looked a hot mess. I'm talking about snotting and tears and makeup all over the place. And I came back out of the bathroom and Sister Debbie said, when, when I was praying for Denisha, one of the things I was saying in the prayers, we're warned for you. We are warned in the spirit for you. We break every stronghold. We rebuke every demon, everything the enemy has set up in your life. We rebuke it. We're warring in the spirit. When I came out of the bathroom, Sister Debbie stopped me and she said, Denise, you was warring in the spirit over there. I felt that. That was another confirmation to me because these are words that we were praying over her and Debbie wasn't present for that. You know what I'm saying? And Debbie wasn't on the other side of the room when I was on my face and Elder Robinson don't know what I was saying. And so this is how the spirit works. It gives confirmation. You know, a lot of times, especially early in your walk, when you think you have the spirit leading you, you question, is it the spirit of Yahweh or is this me? Is it the spirit or is it me? Well, the way to kind of determine that is, is it leading you closer to Yahweh? Is this something that's drawing you nearer to him? Is this something that you even want to do? Because what I've learned oftentimes is the stuff I don't want to do is the spirit leading me. The things I don't want to do, I know this has to be Yahweh because there ain't nothing in me that wants to do this. You know what I mean? So I think that once you learn to recognize his voice, you know, then you can trust that it's the spirit leading you. And once you trust that it's the spirit leading you, you have no choice but to surrender and yield. 
It makes no, it makes no difference, you know, um, fighting him and warring with him and wrestling with him. Like Leo said, it gets to the point where you just have to relinquish control and, and let Yahweh do what he's going to do in your life. Now, on a daily basis, what do you do every day to stay in the spirit, to stay led by the spirit? I know sometimes we may fall, you know, we, we may say the wrong thing, and, but what do you do to make sure you're still on that narrow path? Well, I'm very blessed on my job to have the opportunity to be in the word as much as I want. <clears throat> like that's something I'm allowed to do at work at my desk. So I have my daily bread, but I also incorporated listening to like um, 119 ministries or like listening to different sermons and things because I'm always, I'm hungry for new revelation. It's almost like a drug. Like I want new, I want more. I want, I want to find the little gems and the pearls. I want to, you know, and when I find something, I get excited about it so much so that I have to make a phone call. So I will call Pastor Jeremy. I will call Micah. I will call Jamie and I'll talk Bible. You know, and it's like I have to share what I, oh, let me look at this. What do you think about this? And what's going on with this? You know, I, I mean, I have called him because he's sleep. You know what I'm saying? And she's sleep. And I'll be like, Jeremy, you busy? <laughs> He'll call me and we'll talk about the word. So I stay in the word. I'm increasing my prayer life. Prayer is something that I've always struggled with. I've, I've never had a problem praying every day. Prayer is part of my daily routine, but that's the problem. It's part of my daily routine. And so what I've done now is I started trying to not be so repetitive in my prayers. You know, I'm trusting that those things I gave to Yahweh yesterday, he still has that. I don't need to keep praying the same prayer, protect my children. Yahweh knows. That's the prayer of my heart, protect my children. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't have to keep on rehearsing that. And now I'm starting to, to break out a little bit more in my prayer life. And I think those things are key, spiritual disciplines, meditation, scripture, prayer, filling yourself with the things of Yahweh and not this worldly stuff. You know what I mean? Feed your spirit. This is how you grow in the spirit. Feed your spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, saints. Now, um, I'm going to leave you with a, uh, this, this sermonette online. Um, if you could just listen to it. it. It talks about being committed and what we're supposed to. So just uh, if you could uh, lend your ears uh, here, as you've been doing, of course. But this is, here it goes. You need to weigh in on the cost factor and count the cost of being a disciple of Jesus Christ. It will cost you popularity. It will cost you promotion perhaps at times. It will cost you an easy life. You will have to discipline yourself. You will have to buffet your body. You will have to say no to temptation. You will have to say no to this world. You will have to break with the crowd. You will have to be willing to stand alone for Christ. You will have to be willing to walk to the beat of a different drummer and to, to step out of the crowd even if no one follows after Jesus Christ. You'd be willing to stand if you were the only person in the world for Jesus Christ. That's the cost factor. You would have to be willing to suffer persecution for Christ. And let me tell you, it will come. It might even cost you your life. He is not coming to play games. He is not coming to be docile. He is coming to dominate and he is coming to slaughter. He is the King of kings, and He is the Lord of lords. And at the end of this age, He will bolt out of heaven on a white steed, and His garments are dripped in blood, the blood of His own enemies, and He is coming back to conquer and to damn. You need to make terms of peace with this coming king or you will be subjected in damnation forever. And Jesus Christ has made terms of peace. You need to settle out of court with him. You do not want to go into that final day of conflict with Christ. He will be ruthless in the execution of his justice. But he offers you mercy today. 
he will agree to terms of surrender. He will agree to terms of peace, but they are his terms of peace, not ours. And his terms of peace are very simply this. You must hate your own father and mother and brother and sister and even your own life more than me or you cannot be my disciple and you must take up a cross and follow me or you cannot be my disciple and if you do not, you will meet me in the final judgment and it will glorify God in your destruction. He is pressing you for a decision. He will not be put off. You cannot hit the mute button any longer in your heart. You must answer to Him. Verse 33, so then. Conclusion. None of you can be my disciple. He is saying none of you can be a true Christian. None of you can be in my kingdom. None of you can be in right relationship with me or the Father. None of you can be my disciple who does not give up all his own possessions. What is our Lord saying? He's not backing off. He is increasing the commitment that he is calling for with every line of this section. Well, he's not saying that you have to buy your way into the kingdom of heaven for none of us have enough gold and none of us have enough silver to ever remove the stain of sin that has defiled our inner soul. What is he saying? Who does not give up all of his own possessions? Well, this must be taken in context with other texts of Scripture. And let me just cut to the bottom line of the bottom line. You must transfer the ownership of all that you are and all that you have to all that He is. That's what He's saying. Your life is no longer your life. It is now His life. Your time is no longer your time, it is now His time. Your possessions are no longer your possessions, they are now His possessions. Your future is no longer your future, it is now His future. Your treasure is no longer your treasure, it is now His treasure. And you have transferred all that you are and all that you have to all that He is. That's what it is. So saints, for us to make it, we have to be completely committed on a daily basis. You've seen live examples, and there are many more examples in the word too. So may Yahweh bless you. Let us all be committed to him. Let's make a fresh start. And those that are committed already, let us continue on this path. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, let us live according to the Holy Spirit from now even until we see his glorious appearing. Hallelujah. Change my heart, oh, y'all. Make it.